Hi guys, my name is Lucy and welcome to a new video. If you're new here, please do hit subscribe. I would love to have you come back for more of my videos. And if you do enjoy this video, please do smash a big thumbs up to let me know. For today's video, I'm doing a video that was requested a while ago. I did actually film it and then I never uploaded it because I got scared. And today I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And that is a video on vocal health. I want to give a massive disclaimer at the start of this video. Disclaimer, disclaimer, now. I am not a professional singer. I'm not a professional when it comes to vocal health. I am just a student that sings. And I like to think touch wood. I have quite good vocal health. And... I just wanted to share with you guys tips that I've been given over the years, things that I've found that have helped me, and things that could hopefully help you. Do not take my opinion as gospel, please listen to your singing teacher, please listen to professionals. If you have proper vocal health problems, please go to a professional, please go and get professional help from someone who is qualified. But these are just very basic level things that I find help me to keep myself in good vocal health and things that I maybe use to combat if I'm feeling a little bit tired. The reason that I have actually decided to film this video is because I have filmed a kind of version of it over on TikTok. If you guys don't follow my TikTok then be sure to go check it out because I do do some bonus content over there and I'm really loving it at the moment. And my first vocal health video went so well, it got loads of views. So then I decided to make a part two and it also did really well. So it seems like this is in demand and this is stuff that you guys want to know. And yeah, I just do hope you enjoy this video and as I said before, I am not preaching to be a professional or be a vocal health expert. These are just things that I find help me out. Anyway, now that is out of the way, let's get into the video. So I've split this video into do's and don'ts because I feel like that's a good way to categorise it. Obviously these are just things that work for me, different things work for different people. I'm going to do one do, one don't and switch between the two. The first do I think is quite self-explanatory, but I forget about it a lot and I know a lot of my friends do as well. And that is just that hydration is the most important thing for your voice. I was once told it takes four hours from drinking water for it to actually hydrate your vocal folds effectively. Often when you drink water at first, you feel like it's hydrated, but it really doesn't happen that instantly. You need to be drinking water throughout the day constantly as much as you can and I know when you start drinking loads of water at first you'll feel like you're peeing 402 times a day but I promise that it does improve and if you just slowly build up how much water you drink in a day it really does make a difference. Hydration is obviously not just good for your vocal health it's good for your general health and well-being and if you have an audition the next day or something make sure you drink a lot the night before because you want your voice to hydrate overnight there's no point waking up and drinking loads of water an hour before your audition because it as I said, apparently it takes four hours for it to hydrate your vocal folds. My first don't is obviously an ambiguous one and it is avoid loud areas. This is not possible all the time. You're gonna want to go out to a club or a pub. Well, not at the moment because we're all in lockdown, but you're gonna want to go out places with your friends. You might love going to concerts and I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying be aware of how often you're going and how you're using your voice when you're there. We often strain our voices when we're in loud environments without realizing. Even when you're just in a pub, there's maybe not even any music playing, but with the atmosphere of other people talking or if you're in a club with the loud music, you do end up straining your voice because you end up shouting or talking really, really loudly so you're able to be heard. Again, I'm not saying don't do these things, I'm just saying be aware. Possibly if you have an audition in two days, don't go to a theme park and go on a roller coaster and scream your head off because that is going to tire your voice out. It's just taking these situations into account when you have a big audition or a big performance coming up. <laughs> My second do is have a regular sleep pattern. Again, quite like hydration, this is good for general health as well as vocal health. But a good sleep pattern just means that you are well rested. Your voice, just like your brain and the rest of your body, needs rest. And if you have regular sleep, it is honestly just so much better for your general health. And if your general health is up, then your vocal health will be up with that as well. I personally need eight to nine hours of sleep a night. So I often go to bed quite early because I like to get up early. I just often feel once I've had that amount of sleep, my body is really ready for a new day. 
My second don't is to try and avoid dry spaces. And by this, I mean air conditioned spaces. I am the worst culprit of this. When I'm at home in Dubai, it's so hot and I always have my AC on so cold when I sleep and it's so bad for my voice. When I wake up in the morning, my speaking voice is so crackly and gross because my voice is literally as dry as the Sahara Desert. The air con literally strips out any moisture in the air and really, if you can avoid it where possible, do. If if you can sleep without it on when it's 40 degrees it's not really possible but if there is a chance that you could sleep with a fan on instead it's just so much better or if you are in an air conditioned space constantly then a humidifier is really good you can pick them up on amazon i actually used to have one i don't know where it is now but i should probably try and find it because it just puts some of that moisture back in the air and as i said hydration is so good for your voice so you don't want the air con stripping all that hydration out <laughs> My third do is to do a warm up and a warm down. Whether this warm up is half an hour or this warm up is two minutes, you just need to find what works for you. I know some people that really need to do a good half an hour warm up before they sing anything. And also this depends on the time of the day. If it's later in the day and you've been talking all day, your voice is already quite warm. So your warm up might need to be shorter. But if this is at 8 a.m. and you've not spoken to anyone, then obviously you're gonna need to warm up your voice for a little bit longer. Try loads of different warm ups with your teacher and really just see what works for you. Number three on the don't list is don't overuse your voice. If you feel like your voice is tired, give it a rest. If you felt like your legs were exhausted from running too much, you'd give your legs a break, you'd give them a massage, you'd have a bath. You need to take care of your voice as much as you take care of the rest of your physical body. Some people could sing a thousand songs a week and their voice wouldn't get tired, but some people sing two songs in a row and their voice gets tired. It's all about building up stamina and just finding out what works for you and really just listening to your body and seeing what it needs. This kind of builds into the fact of if you're ill and you're advised not to sing, try and follow the advice of vocal rest. And yeah, just really, really listen to your body and the experts around you. Number four, kind of on the contrary to that, but kind of not, but it is practice regularly. Always practice makes perfect. And I truly believe this, although I don't think there ever is perfect, but the more you practice something, the better you're going to get at it. This is everything from your warm ups, from singing the songs, from technique, everything. You just need to practice as much as you possibly can. And honestly, you will see such great improvements. You'll see improvements in your stamina, in your technique and everything. Every aspect that you practice, you will improve. Singing is just like ballet. It's just like tap. It's just like running. The more you practice it, the better you're gonna get at it. Number four on the don't list is actually to avoid alcohol where possible. Obviously, I'm not saying don't drink. If you're of age and you want to have a drink, go for it. But alcohol is really, really dehydrating for the voice. I'm not saying that I don't drink. I do drink sometimes, but I'm not a huge drinker. Nothing to do with vocal health, just I don't really like the way it tastes. But again, if you have something important coming up, maybe in the next couple of days, try not to drink loads of alcohol because alcohol is super dehydrating for the voice. And also often in environments where you're drinking alcohol is like a club or a bar or a pub again these are loud environments as I said before so it's just trying to think ahead as to what you've got coming up and how you can take best care of your voice Number five on the do list and the final one is to allow yourself to have time off. Don't just allow yourself to have time off when your voice is tired or when you're ill. Allow yourself to have time off just because you're allowed to give yourself time off and you can't practice every second of every day. And it's really important, I think, to have time off to reflect on what you've done and what you've learned and what you've improved on. I've really been enjoying taking lockdown to take time and think back on the last one and a half, two years of training on what I've improved on in my voice and what I would like to improve on during the next couple of weeks. I think it's really good to sit down and make these kind of goals because a lot of the time, a lot of us can just sing a song and be like, cool, I've just sung it, I've done it. But we can really take this time to reflect on what we've learned and what we want to improve on in the future. And finally, on my don't list is posture. You don't wanna have bad posture. I know my mom's probably screaming through the screen at me. My posture used to be so bad. I literally used to sit like this. It was horrendous, but I'm really, really trying to improve it. Bad posture is not good for your whole body, but you can think like if you're like this, 
then your voice is being strained this way or if you're too far back this is not good i don't know what those faces were anyway you just need to find the optimum posture for you and what works best for your body so you can support your voice with your whole body it's different for everyone as i said but yes posture is super super important so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i do think it was much more informative than the last version of it that i filmed literally like six months ago i think because i was so nervous in that last one and i am still a bit wary to put this one out but i hope you all just take it for what it is and it's just me trying to share my advice with you and from what i've learned and what works for me as always if you've enjoyed this video please do smash a big thumbs up to let me know if you have any requests for videos please pop them down in the comments or message me on instagram i hope that you guys are all doing well and that you're safe and healthy and that you're keeping up your training whether that be dance whether that be working out whether that be singing acting anything i just hope that you're staying positive and motivated as always please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos it means so so much to me and i will hopefully see you guys again very very soon thanks for watching bye